How's it going, everybody? Second show of the day. We got a new friend on by the name of Rocky Krogfoss, and uh, I believe he's out of Canada. I'm going to bring him up in just a second as soon as I share this through the network. If these shows resonate with you, please share. I know I sound like a broken record, but we're getting suppressed big time on Facebook. So if you could share to one page, you know, your page or a group, that'd be great. All right, we got 12 people in the house. They're starting to come in. Hello, everybody. Good to see you. Let me bring Rocky up. There you go. Hang on. Let me unmute you. Can you hear me? I can hear you fine. Hey, what's going on, my friend? Rocky, well, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Thank you for uh, the privilege of having a chance to speak. I appreciate it. Absolutely. That's what it's all about here. We're in a place of uh, support and like-minded crazy people. <laughs> <laughs> or who's really crazy. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah, exactly. crazy isn't crazy anymore. yeah <laughs> crazy isn't crazy anymore so i i don't know a lot about you uh we don't know a lot about you uh we're excited to find out who you are what you do what your story is and uh what moves you what moves your soul and uh yeah i don't know uh, where you want to start but i mean in this uh, i love your uh what are the, i love those indian prints behind you those are yeah nice. uh, beautiful oh. dream weavers yeah, that's what I was trying to get out of my mouth, but it wouldn't come out. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, so uh, when did you wake up? When did you figure out everything wasn't what it was seemed to be? Yeah, probably 25 years ago. Um, I had wow. two extreme lives. Uh, one, a, a very violent life as a child. Uh, age 10, my mother and father split up. I was the oldest of five boys, and I overnight became the beaten mother, so to speak. And, oh. um, you know, I, and my father was really violent and, uh, he was really nasty physically and mentally. So, I mean, I, I knew in time that, uh, I would learn why. And I did, um, of course, all of these suppressed, uh, worthiness to receive love, um, imprints, I'll use the word imprints, um, um, created a life of challenge for me in many, many ways, a lot of anger. I was very angry all the time. I was a very good athlete. And um, I took all of my anger out on the sporting field and a lot of people paid dearly for being part of the world that never took care of me yeah. as a child. Yeah. I'm glad I never played football with you. <laughs> no, you, no. Well, yeah. Hockey and soccer and even baseball, I was violent. So go <clears> figure. <throat> so I had to, I had to, um, you know, as I used the term in, in, in two, uh, 1998, I believe it was my spirit guides pulled the switch. And down I went into a deep, dark place of extreme anxiety, depression, chronic pain, and uh, and um, just really a horrible, dark place. And and um, I wouldn't wish that on anybody, but it was my awakening. Um, I sat on my bed one day, about uh, a year into it. Uh, I'd already gone to see the doctor, and he gave me pills, and I threw them away three weeks later because I knew this was stupid. They do nothing. So um, I sat on my bed and I looked into the corner of my bedroom and I literally saw a black vortex spinning. And mm. I, you know, I'm not, I'm not awake at this point. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to uh, look into psychics and mediums and stuff like that and starting to read books. Um, and um, I walked up to it and I literally felt the winds of hell go through my body. And um <clears throat> I just looked at it and I'm, I'm a warrior soul. I've got a long history of military work in my, my previous life. So I just looked at the, um, the black vortex and I went like that to it. And I sat down on, on my bed and I said, Oh my God, I need help. And, and, um, help came three weeks later in the form of a woman who, um, her name is Linda Nardelli. She's probably one of the most gifted channelers you'll ever meet on this planet. She's as good, if not better than Esther Hicks. 
her purpose is to help people heal. It's not about sharing information about readings and stuff like that. So from that time, when I started working with her, we started unraveling the multiple layers of unworthiness, fear, and limitation in my subconscious mind that was, you know, basically beaten into me by my father. It took a long time, but around 2006, um, I had a visit from my spirit guides who I'd never talked to before through her. And one of them's, his name is Seth. He's quite famous, actually. And I literally fell off my chair when he came through and said, hi, my name is Seth. I'm your, your he said, I'm your teacher. And so um, he started telling me about my gift that I was born with that, you know, I, I sort of played with it, but I didn't really take it seriously in, in, in my unawakened state. And my gift was to heal pain effectively and efficiently um, without even having to touch people. But it, it's a process that I'll explain later on. And so I started working with uh, women. Uh, women showed up in, in bunches and in the next month, there was four of them in a row that had severe migraine headaches. And every one of them, I didn't know what I was doing. My spirit guide says, just go out and figure it out. So I just put my hands on their shoulders and 20 minutes later, each and every one of them had their headaches completely disappear and they had the same symptoms afterwards. They had dizziness and they had a cold sweat and their pain was completely gone. They were shocked. I was shocked because I, I still didn't know what I was doing. So as time went on, um, my spirit guides reminded me that I was to study energy. And as an electrician at the time, I knew a lot about energy, but they said, no, 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 that, that kind of energy. And I said, well, what do you mean? And they said, you'll figure it out. So along comes quantum physics, along comes Greg Braden, along comes Bruce Lipton, along comes Albert Einstein, and my world changes as now I'm more of a expert in the science of, of conscious energy and how conscious energy works with the human body to create your reality. And if we know how to create your reality, we know how to change the realities that you're living that do not longer, no longer serve you. Now it's a very, very simple form. I'm gonna make this really simple. That's what I do, I love doing it. <coughs> Excuse me, just getting to the end of a cold. Your body, and even Einstein knew this 100 years ago, your body is not physical. We, we, we all know that. But we don't really understand what that means. So we are an energy field, as Einstein described it, we are in an energy field operating at a lower frequency, which gives us this illusion of this, um, this uh, physical body. <clears throat> all your organs, every single part of your body is an energy field operating at a certain frequency. Now, what determines that frequency? This is the interesting part. What determines the frequency at which you operate, and which also applies to the law of attraction, is the information that you've learned about yourself that you believe to be true subconsciously. This thing here is a troublemaker. This thing here is a healer. And deep, deep down below is the subconscious mind. So the heart and the subconscious mind work together to <clears throat> help you connect to the truth of what you're creating and why you're creating what you're creating and why we are taught to use the brain to somehow fix things that are not working well for us in our life. Like for example, family feuds, uh, money issues, uh, you know, um, narcissism, the list is a mile long. My job and what I was trained to do was to work with the subconscious mind programming, which is, embedded in what we call the quantum DNA, which is the 97% of the DNA that science currently does not understand. However, the Russians have been working on it for over 50 years. So the quantum DNA contains information from everything that you've seen, heard, learned, and experienced and spoken. Everything is in that, it's stored in your DNA. All this information has different biases. Now, when I say biases, positive, negative biases. In my case, I had a hell of a lot of negative biases from my childhood, which means that I was attracting to me a mirror reflection of the frequency that I was putting out because I didn't believe I was worthy of love. I didn't believe I was worthy of a whole lot. So I was attracting back that same frequency to me over and over again. It is that that the spirit guides and my friend Linda, who works with me, to, uh, to begin healing that information in my belief systems. 
the only way to truly sorry go ahead no i was going to ask you no this is good i was going to ask you uh, and so how how did you transform that information in your body well and this is going to sound very simple and trite but you know in a very sta deep state of what we call surrender to allowing the old information to rise up become very aware of it and when you become aware of the program at that level you give yourself the power to create an intention to release it and i tell people that are willing to listen that your spirit guides her spirit guides are working in tandem with you to get out the dustpan on the mop, as I call it, and clean up the excess information that will allow you to release this belief system. And then we embed new information based on the what I call the I am's. I am worthy of unconditional love. I am worthy of being valued. I'm worthy of being heard. I'm worthy of being seen. I'm worthy of being acknowledged. This changes the frequency in your cellular body, which allows that frequency to go out into the, your world and literally change the dial on your TV station to a higher frequency where you're attracting what you want, not what you don't want. Hmm. Interesting. So eh? as an example, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, you know, we've, we've heard a lot of people on this show talk about this in different ways. Um, so let me get, let me go with this. So, okay. So like, as an example, let's sure. say you have a, re a relative or a friend uh in whatever have a big to do uh, and in that big to do you uh, like you said that there an awareness comes up it, because you know it's not about the to do and it's not about the person but you you become aware that you were i don't know uh, overcompensating or uh not Righteous. being true to yourself yeah Righteous. whatever yeah. yeah whatever whatever it is uh, now you pull it up you you kind of sit in that awareness you give your per yourself permission to release it and then you reinforce i'm just going to use a metaphor but you're gonna you're gonna reinforce and fill the empty space up although then maybe it's a transformation and nothing leaves but um and you do that through these affirmations or do are these affirmations specific to what you're what the, the 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 newfound awareness of your crap was are they general i am statements like you were saying i ams are the most powerful affirmations you can say that's come straight from the spirit guides i will say this though uh, that self-healing is an illusion i, I i've tried a hundred thousand times to self-heal i never do it anymore because here's why how can you be present with your pain and be detached from the pain, detached from the outcome, and hold a space for self in the same moment. That's why we need healers. Um, those people who try to self-heal, they might succeed to a certain extent at creating epiphanies, but epiphanies are not healing. Epiphanies are epiphanies. Um, holding Epi a space- epiphany would, uh, An epiphany would be like the awareness you're talking about. That's correct. Oh. This is this is happening because I didn't know this about myself, right? That's true. And That's I'll, very true. I, and yeah, okay. So and I'm just we have a little bit of a lag. So I'm not interrupting you on purpose. Um, and so okay, this is interesting, uh, in regard to what you're saying about self healing. Because I've often wondered about this over the last couple of months, three months or so, as the the landscape has changed in what I'd call the light worker community or the energy practitioner community. I've had a lot of them on here. And over the last year, year and a half, I've watched them and also to their, by their own admission, they've said, you know, my, my practice is changing. It's going from this and then it became this and now it's becoming this. And there's also been this diminishing, uh, the, the frequency of like Yogi guru student yes. teacher has kind of yes. diminished. And a lot of people have, have acknowledged that. Now, yes. in terms of self-healing, you said, let, let's go back over what you just said, because uh, sure. we're all here to learn and expand. And this is what we do through these conversations uh, with our heart's intention. Now, you said it. I'd like for you to restate it. You said, how can you be present when and go ahead and you can say, OK, you can. how can you be present with the pain and allow it to come up to the surface 
and at the same time be the healer which holds a space for that non-outcome result because yes. that's what you have okay. to do as a healer so there's two there's two divergent uh, mindsets that are going on at the same time or intentions if i can use that term therefore like i say we have healers on this planet for a reason and, and i i personally think the entire self-healing industry is a bit of a scam to be honest with you mm. yeah now, and i would now like now to let say, me ask I, you this go ahead go ahead, go ahead. Now okay you go I just first, want, I can, okay, I can. okay okay i just want to say that your, 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 some of your previous guests were right on the money because things are changing. It was Archangel Metatron who channeled to me about mm, five, six years ago, who came to me and said, said, Rocky, you are part of <clears throat> the new earth wisdom. We've been training you for 20 years now. It's important that you go out and you tell the healers of the world that traditional energy healing as we've known it has always been very much like the allopathic mindset, which is it's a temporary fix. It never actually heals mm -hmm. anything. Therefore, it's incumbent upon the healers of the planet to upgrade their wisdom to what I call a quantum mindset, which means we start working with the information in the body a lot more than yeah. we did before. And we start working with the powerful intention, with very gentle love, with surrender, to allow a person to release this pain naturally because the angels are here in a very much, a much more hands-on way, if I can use that term, to help us facilitate that. Yeah. Okay. And so there's a pretty strong school of thought. Now, I, I totally agree with what, what Metatron's message was in, in regard to uh, what we just talked about, which is basically, let's sit down together and, and I'm not throwing rocks at anybody because everything has served us. Okay. Some things don't serve us anymore, but we sit down together. Let's say you're the practitioner and I'm the client. And, and in the old paradigm, uh, you're going to fix me. Okay. Right. Uh, you might use hypnosis. You might do meditation, whatever the case is. Right. Right now. Well, not only now, but I mean, I think there's a lot of people that have been pulling down information for a long time, like yourself, like my wife who always understood that I'm not going to do this for you. I'm going to show you the door and you're actually going to do it yourself. Okay. Correct. So therefore you have, you have a different type of outcome there. Now in regard to the, to the, uh, the way you frame that up. So, well, there's a strong school of thought that if I have a, uh, an issue, a shadow or pain or whatever the case is, and I have developed my, my, um, relationship with my higher self or my team, my multidimensional team, uh, all the same thing, I guess. I can actually stand in a space and my human aspect is over here and my higher self is over here. And with my human aspects participation uh, and, and permission, uh, we go to work uh, and he kind of allows the higher self for the team to, to function as a practitioner. Now, there's a strong school of thought with that. Does it always work? No. Now, my wife came up with um, uh, something 10 years ago, uh, where an individual very much like you're describing where the pain was so immense, that they could not, they could not go there. So she developed what she called a proxy which is very similar to what you're talking about. Now, this would have involved really three people. So you would have the practitioner who's facilitating, you'd have the proxy, and then you'd have the client. Now, the, the, um, the proxy, by way of the permission of the client, would connect higher self to higher self, and then the information coming in from there. Uh, so that's just, that's just what I know uh, that is being forwarded out there in some, you know, schools of thought. Uh, but I also think there's relevance absolutely to what you're saying. I've wondered how this is going to look. And, and I've asked myself this question uh, over the last couple of weeks from time to time, it pops in as I'm like thinking about the show and all that. What are the healers going to do now? Do healers go to healers? You know, that's, absolutely. The, that's the top of my head. Absolutely. Uh, in fact, I'm working with a few healers right now as we speak, um, because they realize that until they clean up their frequencies, which healers have never really done, um, they need to clean up their frequencies. They need to be in the new earth energy in a, in a meaningful way um, that will allow them to attract to them 
clients that um, are, are stepping into genuine healing and because now that they've done the personal work themselves, um, they're more familiar with what's needed. And uh, certainly there's training available. You know, in, in my case, I'm training students now to do how, how do what I do. Um, it takes a year to, to do it because it's it's not just woo 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 and then we're done. It's not it's not that simple. Um, it, it's in, it involves coaching, it involves counseling, it involves a deeper connection, a deep sense of connection to what is really going. I call it what is really going on, not what appears to be going on, or, or what I call their story. I get them mm. to raise up to what's really going on. We'll mm. call it a proxy if you want. That sounds pretty good to me, and um, and that allows them to bypass the ego mind and drop down into the heart center, which is the subconscious mind as well, and yeah. connect to the programming that uh, relates to um, a, a couple of major areas. One is lineage, um, you know, parent influence, but also yeah. the, page, the, the male patriarchal mindset, which is um, creating all kinds of rules <laughs> of limitation right. uh, for, for everyone. Rules I'm just going to close this curtain and just give me half a second here. Yeah, yeah go ahead. You know, go I'm ahead. in the light, but, but you know, not, not this much. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, that's good. It's all good. There we go. I hope that did it. No, it didn't. Let's try this again. It's all right. Do there what we you go. Gotta do. There we go. That's better. So there, so there's been talk too, and and you know it's interesting that, that we're talking about this, um, because in this transition, as this evolvement has occurred that, that we're referring to, which seems to really have started to show its, uh, the, the transition started to show like I want to say like October, November last year, but the interest, one of the interesting byproducts of it is is to watch the commentary on posts and comments and things like that. Everything from projection to open heartedness and, and, and everything in between. And, and some of what you hear out of there is there are many paths. There's yeah. also some very powerful proven modalities. Some people attest it could take an, a, a 10 minute session, an hour session, two sessions. Some might say there's a year training. But they, these, there seems to be a lot of stories behind proven modalities. Uh, and another thing that pops in my head as I talk to people like you on this show is the placebo effect. Yes. You know, the so-called placebo effect. Nice. In that if somebody walks into a situation, or we'll just kind of draw an analogy, like you started to, for whatever reason, you were moved to like start looking for psychic and medium books. And then all of a sudden, you had your wake up experience with the black vortex. So in other words, a patient or a client walks into a situation with some type of innate, innate knowing and desire or combination thereof. And, uh, and, and because of that mindset, regardless to a degree of the, the modality, it works. Uh, and I don't know, I'm just throwing that out there. Not to yeah, prove no, anything, it's but true. To it's that. true, except for one thing we have to examine what they truly believe. If they believe the modality works, it likely will. Exactly, so, that's what so, yeah. so Yeah, so it is about beliefs. There really is nothing else. What you believe is what you create on this planet. It really is that simple. It's not what you think, because thinking is a part of a belief system. So it's what you believe. And once you tap into your beliefs, you can tap into what you truly don't believe and what you truly do believe about yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Now, you, you also drew a pretty good diagram, too. And I've seen some of this out there. I hadn't seen uh, too much of it until in the last few months where people start talking about the gut. You know, you have yeah. your your mind, you have your heart, um, you have and the brain's kind of over here. So you got your mind, you got the heart and you got your gut. And they talked about gut sense, you know, yep. uh, and I and I like the way that you kind of married that all together. So I wanted to just get a little more clarity on that. First of all, when you talked about this gets you in trouble. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we all know that. <laughs> but now are you talking? Are you talking about the, the, the mind or the brain or or both or and or both is one? Both plus the ego. Yes. 
Okay. Bruce, Dr. Bruce Lipton made it very clear, and he's he's one of my mentors for sure, that 95 to 99 percent of your reality is created from the subconscious mind. And we've all been trained to use our brain slash ego slash mind to try and control our reality. And the truth is, it never does, which is why people go nuts trying to, <laughs> to create change in their lives, and it never happens. So yeah. they go to mo they go to motivational speakers and they get all motivated to change things with this. And of course it doesn't work because you need inspiration and, and heart energy is inspiration. Now heart and energy and inspiration are directly tied to the subconscious mind. And the yeah. subconscious mind is where it all happens. So I don't even bother with the story. I just listen to the story to hear where their pain is coming from. Then we mm -hmm. let that go and we drop down into the heart and we start to connect to the subconscious mind and the feelings in the body will give you yeah. all the clues you have because we're so trained to not feel on this planet. The entire allopathic yeah, this... mindset is based on masking feelings. Yeah, I mean, and what you're describing, you know, the, the guts of what you're describing is really what in one way or another, what I hear and see uh, you know, from energy practitioners, and I'm lucky because I happen to be married to one. Uh, so I get some really in depth understanding. The only thing I see that's any different, and it's not a big deal, is that um, the question that's been popped up in my head the last couple of weeks, which is what are the healers going to healers to be healed? And like if everybody's a healer, or do they all have different types of healing? But when you look at the energetic practitionerships, uh, or methods or modalities, they all pretty much are the same thing to me. Now, exactly. We just had somebody on who was talking about um, what, what was it? I, I'm Hotep. Um, you know, they're going back to the Egyptian or whatever. And they were talking about sound and vibrational and light healing. Uh, I've, you know, had people on here, you know, talk about just being in somebody's space, kind of like being next to Ama, you know, or Buddha or whatever the case is. But I guess what I'm saying is, is that it's, a, it's an interesting uh, evolvement. Uh, and, and it's interesting in the community to see how, how much conviction, uh, on one hand, you could say how much conviction people have to the method that they have learned through their experience, which could also be explained, possibly, not always, is how much attachment they have to it. And I find it really interesting, uh, an interesting nuance as this evolvement is occurring, because I know everything's changing. And I just wonder what everything's going to look like in six months. Is there going to be one method? Uh, you know, uh, is there going to be a hundred thousand methods? Uh, you know, I mean, I don't know. I'll, I'll just say that's a very good point, by the way. I'll just say this. Even with my students, I say to them, I don't want you to learn to be me. You know, because yeah. I'm very good at helping people heal depression, anxiety, and, and, and the, a wide variety of those things. But my method and my connection and who I am is not what I'm teaching them. I'm teaching them to connect to their innate skills and their innate gifts yes. in concert with the wisdom that I teach them about what a quantum emotional healer does in terms of energy and information. So yeah. I'm teaching them to draw out the story, to draw out and help a client surrender to the, the core process that is creating the reality that they're experiencing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I, and I totally jive with what you're saying about, you know, bring the experience to the table, you know, uh, the story's important, you know, as a lady uh, put the other day, as long as you don't become the story, because there's a lot of value in these transformations people have made all over the world. Also to share your skills and abilities, processes and modalities. What's it been like for you uh, 20, going on 20 years, or really it's been 20 years, going 21 years, uh, to watch this whole thing evolve on a collective scale, because I'm sure even though you were tapped into that lady yeah. and then the Bruce Lipton's and so on, that you had to be the odd person out uh, almost in any community <laughs> in the world. <laughs> yes, 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 and family. yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, and yes, it's been lonely. Um, even in the spiritual community, I've been outside of it for most of my life because they just don't get me. And um, my spirit guides told me uh, many years ago, they said, uh, I like to joke when, 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 when they're channeling, I like to make fun of their, their voices. I was going, okay. Um, how could we have predicted that you, Roque, would have reached into the future and pulled in 
a healing modality from the future into the now. They said it wasn't in your karmic blueprint. They said, you made the choice to do that. And I said, I didn't even know I reached into the future to pull this. But, you know, that's kind of like what it is. So what I'm doing is, is basically I'm simplifying a mindset and a process that allows us to understand how humans create their reality and how to shift and change that, that reality in a very simple yeah. way. But it takes work and it takes, you have to be, you said it earlier, you're right on the money. I can't do it for you. You have to show up. You have to be willing to do the emotional feeling body work. In order to heal it, you must feel yeah. it. Yeah. Well, well there's, an, there's another school of thought on that. <laughs> there's another school of thought on that with energy practitioners that there that I guess because information is moving so fast, which is part of part of the reason I asked you the question, like what yeah. have you seen? Have you seen the exchange of energy, code exchange, healing, whatever, whatever label you want to put on it, accelerate? Uh, yeah, well, everyone I've asked has said, you know, that's been a practitioner for a while, has seen a change in their clientele, has seen more people waking up, has seen people moving through stuff quicker. I guess, you know, one of the things I look at with this energy uh, work, and which, which is, uh, you know, I find absolutely compelling is uh, how much of the job is done when a person faces the shadow, how, how much of the battle is just to just to be open and say, okay, I don't know everything. What is it in me that I don't know that's deeply implanted in my subconscious that I need to fix? How much of, of, of the magic is, is uh, invoked at that point, just by them doing that? Um, it's everything. Um, you're, you're bang on the money. Um, yeah, it, it's everything at that point, because it's an intention, and it's a surrender. And at that point, when a person comes to me and says, I've been in this pain forever, I've seen my doctor, they never can do anything, they throw me on the pile call, sorry, we can't do anything more for you. Please help me. I'll do whatever it takes. It's whatever mm -hmm. I'll do whatever it takes that I love to hear. And I say, sit down, I promise you, will have great results soon. I don't give mm. a timeline because it's not it's not my journey to give a timeline. It's my my job to provide a space that will allow them to choose how quickly and how slowly, whatever the case may be, is that they release this toxicity in their body. And I provide a space and a, a, a counseling coaching process that allows them to uh, do all this work without self-judgment, without fear, and um, in, in a space that's very, very gentle and loving. And it's actually quite easy yeah. because um, in that space, uh, there is no outward judgment. Let me ask you this. Um, and this is all, as you, I hope you know, this is all for the sake of, of all of us expanding and being open, showing yes. up and being open. Uh, but in terms of like, uh, let's say a session uh, and somebody uh, no, no, let's do it different. Oh, what do you do? What do you do when you get triggered? Uh, or maybe you hit something that's bigger than you can handle? Do you go to a healer? Or do you from, handle for myself or get a little bit of both? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I still see my my same healer. Um, I have a, a student that I trained um, for a year now. Uh, she's been she's been done for like <clears throat> almost a year now. So um, you know um, she's turned into a cracker jack medium as well. And it was not even in the cards at the beginning, but she connects with a whole pile of of really well known archangels, <coughs> and she comes along and she helps me to do some healing too so i surrender what you know i'm not perfect i never will be i realize that i realize i've let go of tons and tons and tons of inner child pain and anger but i'm not perfect and um you know occasionally especially with new earth energy being what it is mm. We're all on the hot seat now. We're all on the hot seat. <laughs> That's right. Yes. So you wake up yeah. every day and it's all the rules change. The uh, rules have now completely there is, changed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. I don't know anything, you know. I mean, now there there's a there is a, another uh what? Another frequency, uh another uh, bit of code out there. I don't know what you how I would describe it. Uh along the lines of uh we're moving from disempowered to empowered yes uh physician heal thyself you know we're moving from if you can do something i can do it 
uh, if you've done it and you put 20 years into it uh, because of the way things are now, that information is available. And I certainly won't have to go through what you went through or you what I went through or whatever. Uh, what would you say to someone who said, because uh, I'd like to go back over this because I want to get a clear understanding that I can heal myself. Uh, I, I can even if it's something, for instance, let's just say I came in and I said, Look, I know I got shadow. I don't know all my shadows. Uh, I don't have any big, you know, I don't have any uh, thing in my body really speaking to me right now. And, and when they do come up, I can clear them. Uh, if I need to find a shadow, and I've run out of shadows, just by setting the intent, I can bring it to me. Uh, in other words, that the, the difference being that, that, uh, you know, you, I don't need someone else. I mean, how would you, how would you answer that? And I know you addressed it at the beginning of the show, yeah. but I'd like to hear it again. Well, life brings your shadows to you through the law of attraction. And now in fifth dimensional energy, there is no karma time lag. Everything happens in the now. You're creating that reality now. So if that shadow is still putting out a frequency of shadow out there, you're going to get that lesson back. That's your opportunity for epiphany. It's usually in, in the form of some kind of pain or struggle or trauma. And when you go into pain or struggle or trauma, you, you don't go out and say, oh, my God, you know, it's your fault. You just take those dots from that trauma, you come back to you, and inevitably we'll find something in the inner child that still needs some attention. Yeah. Now, do you use, I'm just curious, actually, I'm not going to go there, because uh, there's a, I wanna, I'd like to get to a couple other things. Sure. This is very interesting. I'm just curious on a personal level, and one of the reasons I ask these types of questions is because there's a lot of people... Uh, waking up now yeah a lot of the experiences that they're having or what you had in 1999 you know or what i had in 2011 or yes. whatever um in 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 regard to your communication with the you me we and it yes you've talked about spirit guides uh archangel uh is there any and, and there's no wrong answer i'm just curious uh, is there any galactic or star family connection or community always we're all in? connected always always Pleiadians, Syrians, Arcturians, you name it. They're all involved. Galactic Council of Light, Pleiadian uh, Council. We're all involved. It's all one sharing of information to help humanity move forward. It, they're all involved. And um, so I focus on my spirit guides because, you know, uh, they have a what we call a vested interest in my evolution. They benefit. Mm -hmm when I evolve. Therefore, they have a vested interest. Therefore, I'm, I'm working with them. They're my team. And I get, uh, see, I'm not a psychic per se, you know, or I, I don't even know what that means because I'm not a psychic. But, but when I'm working with a client, I get what I call puffs of smoke. Just information just shows up and I've learned to just trust it. I have a funny mm -hmm. story for you. Um, Many years ago, when I was first doing this work, and I wasn't really trusting the information I was getting, I was working on a woman, I was trying to get her to go into her three year old child. And I got a message, a puff of smoke, ask her about the blue dog. And I my immediate reaction, um, subconsciously was, I'm not going to ask her that stupid question. Are you kidding me? No. So I kept working away. And then poof, 10 minutes later, ask her about the blue dog, because I wasn't making any progress. So finally, I said, Okay, I'll ask her. You know, if, if she laughs at me, it's your fault. <laughs> so I asked her about the blue dog and she goes, oh, my God, how did you know that? that I would forgotten all about that. That was my favorite toy when I was a little girl. And boom, there she went right into the three year old. Boom, into the three year old. Mm. And mm. so <clears throat> the information they provide, I mean, they're 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 watching the whole thing as we're doing it. Of course, they're never away. They're always with us 24 seven. So they're there to help. So, you know, I just receive the help and I'm grateful for it. Whatever information comes to me, I put it forward in a way that allows them to connect to the feeling of it, to the memory, whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. Because we're trying to be as effective and efficient as possible to get to the source of the um, painful reality creating information. I'm just curious from your from your vantage point, you know, and you've and you you know, and you've talked about how it's all tied together, the galactics and the other essences and, and so on. 
What do you think we're doing here? I'm just from your very, from very your simple opinion. What do you very, very, very simple. We're here to evolve to a higher state of love. End of story. Thanks for much showing up. Drive home safely. <laughs> uh, See you later. <laughs> it was nice talking to you. <laughs> 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 and we do so yeah. by coming to the planet that this the angels call the the, the planet Hell. where we're, no no well that's what we call it they call it a place <laughs> where humans come to play and so they mm -hmm. ask us to play nice together <laughs> that's cryon actually do you, does that do, do you do you feel um there's been talk uh all year especially as 2020s approaching and even maybe even uh, this 11 11 that just passed or was a was a demarcation line or maybe the solstice in december um do you see th does it feel to you like it's freed up something's freed up like there's yes. less resistance and less yes. bullshit you know whatever yes yeah. well the energy of the fifth dimension was you know we we are responsible for creating that possibility and so we are in the new earth now but spirit has um you know added to it if i can use that term um, an energy field that allows our quantum DNA or our divine DNA to start waking up. So we're using more and more of our DNA than we ever have before because the energy fields of the earth are allowing it. That's why so many people are waking up right now. And that's why also, I might add this, that, you know, the forces of greed and corruption and, and everything else, the cabal, if you want to use that term, uh, they're going down in a big way. And it's starting right now with, you know, I'm sure you heard about Prince Andrew and his uh, and, and Jeffrey Epstein and all that kind of thing. So, yeah, so those uh, forces yeah. are, are being <laughs> being those forces are being um, they're being revealed. That's a good word. Everything is going to be revealed. That's what I know. So when all the stuff comes forward to being revealed, it will help us wake up even more that we have been programmed away from our true selves. And it's time to let go of what we believe to be true and start yeah. creating our own realities. Absolutely. Yeah. You're speaking to the singing of the choir here. But uh, yeah. now in terms of like, uh, you made the reference to Epstein and Prince Andrew and all the other stuff that's out there. Uh, you know, it only makes sense. I mean, this stuff's been prophesized. I mean, mm -hmm. nobody can deny that, um, regardless of who, you know, how that was done. Uh, and that is that, you know, the apocalypse is uh, the definition is unveiling, everything will be revealed. Totally. I absolutely get that. Do you think it's, uh, do you think the important revelations are our own personal ones within ourself? Absolutely. Uh, do you think do you, do you think that the ones on the global stage, so to speak, or even the family drama stage or whatever, do they have any merit? Are they are they anything we should be keeping our eye on? No. You're you're right about one thing. Focus on self, focus on building a higher state of self-love whether it's through healing or whether through recognizing you're doing things that are harmful to yourself. When you focus on releasing that, which doesn't work for you anymore, and you fill your body with more love, you're actually emanating a, an energy field that changes what we call the mass conscious energy of the planet, which is how things that are out of balance are created as well. So soon in time, um, as we continue to heal, as we continue to recognize that we are more powerful than we ever thought we were, um, yeah. that mass conscious energy is going to shift and change and war and violence and greed and corruption will eventually melt away because it's not even going to be possible to create it. Yeah. So that's yeah. what we're doing. Yeah. Now. There's, yeah. There's, there's, there's a lot to be said for the school of thought that everything happens in the, in the energetic field first and then on the linear uh, in the ethers. Uh, and on that note, um, you know, uh, do you think or do you feel that uh, these things that are going to occur and materialize in the physical on the physical timeline have already pretty much been, uh, you know, been achieved in the energetics? Yes, I totally. And, and, and if you listen to any of the channels, you can listen to anybody, uh, one of a one of a hundred different uh, archangel channels or Mary Magdalene or Jesus or anybody. They all say the same thing. They all say the same. Good job, light workers. You did it. You did a great job. You saved this planet from the uh, apocalypse, the Armageddon. And we're now on track for um, a millennium of uh, of peace and love. 
which we're going, which we're creating right now. We are the light workers at the head of the army of light, and we are the heroes in heaven right now. That's right. You know, I don't know if you've seen our hashtag. The human is the hero. I that's am soul, right. and the human is the hero. <laughs> that's the two <laughs> that's uh, true. that we run on. What do you think about the prospect or the wild card of uh, these kids coming in? Like, well, my my even. My daughter is a crystalline indigo child. I know they exist. I, I've been ordered to work with them um, to help many of them be okay with the fact that they know they're different than everyone else. They know that they have a different mission. They know who God is. They don't have to debate it. They were born with it. They are about love and they are about helping people on the planet. They're about helping the planet. It is ingrained in their DNA. So they are a higher frequency a group of kids and they will succeed. They are here now. My daughter's 29. She's the first wave of the indigos and um, she's here. And she, if you, if you get a chance to meet these kids who are in their divine integrity, um, you'll mm -hmm. see that, that, that the hope is right there. It's right before our eyes. All we have to do is open our eyes to it. These kids are amazing. Yeah. Yeah. My feeling is, is that the, the energy they're bringing in untainted, I mean, you know, as they grow in numbers, nothing's going to need to be said or done or, you know, that that energy is going to affect the collective and, you know, therefore affect the individuals. It, it's just going to expand. There, you know, there's work to be that. done, though. There's work to be done. They're here to uh, yeah. the, the, the term they used was break down the bastions that lack integrity. That was the term that they used. And show me an institution, I'll show you something that's out of integrity. <laughs> <laughs> Everything we've looked at is not of integrity. Everything yeah. we thought was not of integrity. We just didn't know, you know. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think another way, another way to look at this is uh, uh, the things that you're involved in and what we talk about here is the, uh, you know, becoming aware. You know, I guess that's what I call waking up. And then it's like, what are you going to do with it? And because there is, uh, there is, you know, there are so many parallels, things that parallel that ex with that expansion, such as, you know, greater love or greater wisdom, greater power, greater skills and abilities, but also greater responsibility. Yeah, there is a reason. It's, it's, you know, it may be a playground, but I don't think the universe, the universe is, is, is so, you know, so incredible that when it's playing, it's working. But, you know, we're here expanding something and, and, it, and it does take on uh, we do take on more responsibility. I like what, they, what you brought up about the kids, about integrity. You know, that integrity is in itself like a moment by moment function, which it's just you and the universe. You can't you can't, you know, pull the wool over its eyes. You no. know, so it's uh, no. it's interesting uh, to hear you talk about this. Um, now, what do you, what do you, uh, what do you, what are your objectives? I mean, what I, I got a pretty good idea of what your mission is. I mean, do you have anything on the horizon that you're working towards or anything like that? Well, I, I'm really looking forward to having a chance to speak to large numbers of people. I you know this is an opportunity. Um, I want to uh, spread my, my healing gift to those who would be interested in learning it. Um, you know, I, I want to help. It's my, my spirit, I got another spirit guide. Her name is DC. And, and a few years ago, she came to me and she pleaded with me. She said, Rocky, I, DC, your spirit guide, I want you to commit to helping as many of those people out there as possible so that I, DC, can go in and help empower them and help them release their pain. Do you mm -hmm. commit to that, Rocky? And I said, absolutely. So um, everything will unfold as it should. Uh, this this show is an opportunity to spread my message, to spread a message of hope that everything's going to be fine. And if we buy into the chaos, we create chaos. If we separate ourselves and we choose to operate uh, in a bubble of love amongst the people and start sharing that love with them on a frequency basis, people will begin to wake up in larger and larger and larger numbers. Our job is not to buy into the chaos, it's to let the chaos find its own way to end, because it will. Our yeah. job is to be loving and caring and, and integrity and open and honest and authentic in everything that we do and allow people to be attracted to us who are interested in becoming that way as well. And that's, and that, you know what, and that's a full-time job. You know? I mean, we, <laughs> yeah. can talk, we can talk about shadow work and we can talk about all the stuff that we talk about, but, you know, being on your game now, I, I firmly believe that 
because of the acceleration and the expanse of, of all this new earth energy, it's like when we were babies, you know, when you're a little kid, you were lear you're learning, like, I forget the numbers, but like 50,000 things a day. And then over the years, it drops, you know, more and more, but we've gone back to that. But I think that, uh, you know, uh, that the, the level of change is, is, uh, that's exponential. I don't, I, I look, what's it going to look like in a year? You know, what's it going to look like in a year? Will well, we be, uh, all we know is teleporting. All yeah, uh, yeah. What could be? We could be. Uh, it could be. Why? Why not? Why not? But um, we are all being uh, rewired regularly to a higher state of of working with fifth dimensional energy, and so our job is to surrender to this gift that's being handed to us over and over again. That's why we go through these full moon things and these Mercury retrogrades because they go in and they go like there there's some stuff that you're 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 experiencing that's kind of your your shadows from the past and here we'll go in and we'll help you clean that up are you willing to do that yes good let us go in and rewire you so that you can operate in fifth dimensional energy with integrity and authenticity as you have been and let's keep keep that vibration going i don't i don't i don't think we're going to have any choice no, we don't. <laughs> That's I'm sorry, you're right. You now, but I got most of that. It sounded. Yeah. It's uh, <laughs> well, I, because it's just going to become. You know, and we're seeing that. We're seeing it in our own lives. We're seeing it as we observe others. Everything is getting louder and louder. People talk about the great divide, and they think, "Oh, these people are over here, and these people are over there." I don't think it works that way. I think the great divide's right here, and you know, we can observe things, and obviously, we're observing. You know. We're observing for a reason and uh, a message to ourselves. I, you know, I have a, a question. Uh, it intrigues me, um, you know, and, and I never get the same answer. But you, you, we talk about spirit guides. Uh, some people talk about how over time they embody it, uh, embody the different guides. And, and they begin to hear, like, say, one singular voice. Other people uh, have teams. I mean, how is it for you? Has it changed at all? Has it always been this type of relationship? Yeah, no, for me, it's been very simple. Um, I mean, like I say, the woman who channels uh, the spirit guides that I first started working with her, her, her name is Linda Nardelli, and she channels a team of seven spirits called Mazandia. They speak as one voice. Occasionally, they'll individuate and they'll come to me in, in their singular essences and, and speak to me. Depending on what subject matter it is, they'll come and uh, talk to me. Uh, you know, and, and their, their, their job is just, it's very simple. It's to help me heal the programs that you know i believe to be true at the time but i wasn't really aware of but they're, they're creating so much in me creating awareness creating you know saying it's okay to feel now it's okay to love now it's okay to trust to love now it's okay to step out into the world it's okay to be seen it's okay to be heard now it's safe you're not going to be burned at the stake anymore you know that kind of thing yeah so it's safe because okay. i i tell people science is our friend now not our enemy. And that's why I chose to study all these quantum sciences, because I can explain how a thought wave energy field becomes your reality in science and in spirituality, the two of them merge together. Yeah, spirit science. I call it Sology. <laughs> <laughs> can you hear me? Because you were cutting out pretty bad. Yeah, yeah there's, a, doing... there's a huge lag right now. It's like if I say something, like two minutes later, you'll get it. Um, but it just happened toward, right toward the end, though. Yeah, it's Sorry. great, man. This is great stuff. It's a pleasure meeting you. Uh, Thank you. My yeah, pleasure, too. Me? Yes, I can. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah, I'd love to collaborate and check in on you again sometime if you're open to it and uh, see what's happening two, three months down the road. Absolutely. You know? And uh, absolutely. Right, what, what are your – just this is not – forecasting or predictions or anything i'm just curious with your with your life experience and everything that you have completing you know uh, making you up you know all your experiences and your relationships and connections and practice and all what do you think 2020 is going to look like one year from today what do you think it's going to look like a year from now it's going to be a completely different world in terms of the breakdown yeah. of that which we thought was real I believe that the, 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 the real fall begins now. All of the lies that we've been fed, you know, medical lies, religious lies, uh, political lies, media lies, uh, the, all the lies are going to start revealing themselves now. 
and people are going to be shocked at just how much we've been controlled for a very very long time and yeah I, and so, I think there's a i think there is a group of us that's not going to be <laughs> well yeah no i'm not, yeah you know you i agree with you on, over the shock yeah no i, agree I, I do you. you know some yeah some people have been talking about i think i mentioned this already i know i did in the last show but how the the that there would come a time when when you know we'll be put to work my wife was told that 10 years ago you know and and, she, and there was a coming a time and and a lot of people i've talked to recently said that time is coming and the the way i kind of saw it was this whole field of those that you talked about those first waivers or the the boots on the ground we're going to be providing these services and providing this stuff for the the you know vast majority that would probably be in the category of you know i can't believe you know what's been going on all this time because that's a hell of a band-aid to rip off it sure is isn't it <laughs> no that's true i would say that that awakening will rise vastly through the um understanding that, that that we've been controlled in so many ways and once people understand how control actually happens through core belief programming and um repetition mm -hmm. you know the, you know this this is normal is it well okay so if you want to believe that that's fine but what's normal is not normal anymore what's 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 appropriate now yeah. is what's what you allow your heart to experience and that's the only thing that's really appropriate yeah. from here on in yeah, yeah. truth yeah. is stranger than fiction we're finding <laughs> that out uh um, that's true yeah yeah good stuff man really good stuff i i think what's going to be interesting too is all this stuff comes out and that's going to be a really, to me, a really good uh, barometer, you know, for how conscious and how awake are we really? And that's going to be like, you know, are people going to go vigilante? Are they going to actually go into their heart and, and, and see things from a higher level of awareness, you know, that we know we are? Um, that's going to be interesting. There will be those of us who do that. There will be vigilantes. It is, but it, but it's, but it's, it's a mix of stuff that needs to happen. There needs to be a shakeup, whatever that looks like. It is our job to try and yeah. keep as much balance as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think uh, de definitely the energy shifted. I mean, we're not, we're not. Uh, things seem to be, uh, you know, they, 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 there seems it, it's just a weird it's a new math. It's a, it's a new way. Things are like aligning in a weird way. Things that don't make sense, make sense. You know, I tell people, you know, my, my, my motto is if it, if it doesn't make sense, do it. If it comes in here and it doesn't make sense and you probably need to do it, which yeah. is got what got us all here anyway. And what got you here too. Yeah, you know? exactly. Besides exactly. flipping off the black vortex, you probably could have gone through your uh, <laughs> in five years, but you flipped off the devil and uh <laughs> all hell broke loose <laughs> yeah it's good talking to you i thank appreciate you. it thank you for uh, honoring us with your presence and sharing space with us today i'd look forward to another collaboration if you're open to it in a few months and uh we'll check in on you and see what's happened may i share my website with the people absolutely yeah yeah absolutely. my website is very simply www.migraine number one mastery migraine one mastery.com um, my phone number, I do do uh, free initial introductory healing sessions. So if anybody has stuff on their plate, whether it's pain or trauma, doesn't matter. Um, my, my phone number is 604-802-6390. And my email is very simply stressfreeme99 at gmail.com. Thank Very you. Cool. And if you want, put the put the links up in the comments as there'll be because we've been getting suppressed so much, we have probably three to four times more replay views than we do views. And it used to be the other way around. But it uh, doesn't matter. But people will see it pop up in there if you want to put those links in the comments. And uh, we sure. look forward to collaborating with you again. Oh, Wishing pleasure. you the best always. All blessings to you and yours. Take care. Thank you so Peace much. Out, everybody. Friend. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.